So here we are now with the Muffin Motorsports Club's Formula 125. That's got a mixture of bikes out there. We've got a Grand Prix 125 machine ridden by Paul McCartney. We've got the Formula 125 machines. Also a GP80 bike by young Roy Skinner. Only 11 years old, Duncan, and a, a fantastic uh, prospect for the future. And we've also got two guys up on uh, Kawasaki Ninja 250s. And that is a machine of Callum Grieger and Max Alexander. Yeah, McCartney, Grieger and Skinner are on the front of the grid with McGaw, Robson and Page on the second row of the grid. Now let's get these guys underway on a slightly patchy track here at Knock Hill. Grey skies. How did you get? Is that uh, Callum Grieger getting put in position? But Paul McCartney is on the front row of the grid. He has a look over the pit wall. Now needs to look up towards the bridge lights on the beats and spawning supply bridge. And here we go, red rise. On come the red lights. Nice big low off the pit wall. And away goes Callum Grieger. So it was Max Alexander who was starting further down the back. Callum Grieger got an absolute rocket ship start there as he head down towards St. Cups for the first time of asking any leads, Dennis. Yeah, almost like a mechanic got caught with his pants on there. Wasn't ready to go when the lights went out. But you know, he's skin on that GP80 looking impressive. But look at Max Alexander, the speed he carried through the bottom of uh, Leslie's there towards Scotsman Con. He's already from the back up to third place. Obviously, you can see his competition in Callum Grieger ahead of him. Bear in mind, these kids are only like 14, 15 years old on these Kawasaki Ninjas, and they're doing a great job. I've got to say, the last time I saw Max Alexander not Kelly was wobbling around the back of the back of the field on a, an RS125 Honda, and he must be the biggest improvement I have seen in bike racing in <coughs> absolutely years, as he heads round now towards, through his slopes towards the, the hip for the first team of basket. The conditions look like they're starting to close in on us a bit here. Yeah, it looks like it's starting to rain just like a little bit, Duncan has been spitting in the air, but Carl Grieger leading the way, and to be fair, he's the first man on the road, he's got to set the pace, so obviously if you see the rain, you've got to kind of adjust your speed, and see, because you don't want to be the first man to go down the road, because it's easy for people to follow you. Up towards, clicking off the first lap, goes Callum Grieger, with Max Alexander second, and there's rain falling on that camera lens now, as you come down towards Sea Curves, they're going to have to be a little bit careful here, as Grieger tips it in, from the first of the off, and then Grieger's down, he's going down, we heard that in the background there, the bike goes down, and so does Alexander, Max Alexander almost skittles Callum Grieger in the gravel trap there as both bikes are down. Grieger stands looking at it, but very unfortunate for those young men. We could hear him crashing in the background and somebody else goes down. Who's that? That's is that young Tommy Page as well. So Paul McCartney was the only one who made it through. That melee. It was a bit, a bit of carnage there, and obviously uh, two of the ninjas both down and uh, one of the other people towards the back. I think that might have been uh, young Lewis Patterson. Yeah, red flag, Jamie Revels there on the radio at the hairpin with waving the red flag, and yep, there you go, emotions run high as there's gravel getting kicked and stomped at the state curves there. But that was a bit of a drama there. Look how quickly the conditions have changed now, though. We've had that shower, you can see it passing in the distance there behind the bridge. And now the beautiful sunshine is coming up the valley from Stirling as we get this race starting again. Yeah, we just look towards the inside there. Young Roy Skinner, that GP80 bike, absolutely gets a rocket off the line there, Duncan, gets a mega start. And he's already leading his head down towards the top of Sea Curve for the first time. A GP80 leading the 125 bike and the 125 is quite impressive so far. Now, apart from being a special case having pretty cool hair, Roy Skinner is a very special rider in Scotland, Dennis. Yeah, for sure, you know, he's a young lad, he's, uh, he's only 11 years old, he's on an 80cc machine, Duncan, so it's a bike with not a lot of power, uh, so he's actually eligible for the uh, Formula 125 class, similar to the uh, super teams, but he's trying to, you know, he's being chased down by Julian McGaw, and we expect McCartney to probably pass you and Roy Skinner down the back street with the extra horsepower of the GP bike. Mike Skinner, his dad used to race, and a very quick racer, I've raced against Mike myself, or I've been in the same races, I mean, he was always miles ahead of me, but yeah, great to see the next generation coming on, and Roy Skinner still leading the way there, this. He's led this entire lap and have finally the RS125 of McCartney comes round and passes him on the straight line speed. Now can Skinner get back on the brakes? It's still a little bit patched in there. McGaw homes in on the number five purple bike as well. Jelly McGaw uh, looking pretty racy. Yeah, it looks like McCartney was a bit sluggish around the head and there, ran a little bit wide, probably on the foot there, a little bit chilly. But it's his first unit to the circuit, so doing a good job in terms of picking up Rory Skinner chasing him down. And Jill McGall there doing a great job. Her competition really has to be young Rory Skinner. You know, the lap times are probably two, three seconds off what the Formula 125 should be doing. So they've got to find a little bit of speed. Paul McCartney has come over from Ireland like Luke Johnson. We saw in the previous uh, Super Stock 600 series. And uh, it's great that they've come over. McCartney's really thinking about if he can get lap times quick enough. He's thinking about coming back and having a crack at the British Championship, but he set himself a target. That British Championship is pretty hot. Yeah, the 
guys are all fast at all. But once you get to the British Championship stuff, you know, you can win club stuff, you can win national stuff. When you get to the British Championship, that's where everybody, you know, that's where all the top guys are. So it's not never going to be easy. It's Julie McGraw there looking at the back of you, Rory Skinner. Yep, she's still trying to get past that little ATCC bike and she's tucked right in. Now, Rory is, is absolutely tiny, so he will be pretty quick in Australia. And even though that bike is 80cc, you can see he is an absolute tiny, tiny little guy. And Gillian McGraw is looking at how the brakes are there, but good move, Gillian McGraw up the inside, passes Rory Skinner. Nice, clean, good bit of overtaking there. And there is hope for the future. Yeah, it's probably a little bit nervous for these people. It's all overtaken on damp patches, Duncan, so you're not going to have the most of grips for them. The actual racing line that's drives a few damp patches in places, so making it quite tricky. And you've got on his skin He's got no weight to him, Duncan. He's actually running on wet tyres in the dry yeah. and in the wet or damp, try, regardless. Try and generate some heat in those tyres because he was saying that the other ones won't possibly move out and generate the heat. Yeah, well, we've had a look at the bike as well after he's finished the race, and there's no wear on the tyre whatsoever, even with a wet, you know, he's still got the full tread there, he's still got loads of grip, so whatever he's doing, it's obviously doing the job right. His dad, Mike, has obviously got that bike set up absolutely perfect for the young lad. He's doing a great job, but Julian McGull, they're trying the hardest to try and stick in. Yeah, if that was me and you on that bike, we'd wait with our tyres right now, there'd be absolutely nothing left to them whatsoever. We'd be going half the speed of speed now. <laughs> it probably wouldn't move. So he comes through Clark Corner and Rory Skinner, uh, on his way towards him, but you can still see there's some quite large damp patches. Now, who's this woman in the back of them as well? I think that's Ashley Robson. Ashley Robson, shown well as well, and well as well. In the Formula 125 classes, we're coming towards the airpin. Skinner on the brakes. McGaw, so brave as Jelly McGaw, and actually catches up from quite a distance here and gets through the corner. The lovely Scottish knee sliders adorning the side of her le leathers here. But at the front it is Paul McCartney, who's now stretching his legs away from Rory Skinner. And you can hear the little 125s and 80 go past it. The wind's going to play a big effect on these big suburbians because they're so light. Yeah, for sure. Depending on which way it's actually hitting them at the moment, it's either going to be pushing up the start finish straight or pushing them down towards the hairpin. Uh, so it'll make a big difference in terms of the gain. If they're having a headwind, they might have to change it slightly. Probably a nice block one so they can drive harder in towards the wind. Out of Scott's spin, they come down towards Butchers and then the John Irish again. I'll let Dennis do the technical stuff, it's better that way. Yeah, you know, Rory Skinner and Julian McGraw are actually avoiding the curbs going in and probably just a little bit on the exit, and that's costing them time. You know, they could probably gain an extra second through the chicane if he was all up with the right curb on the left as they go in, carry the momentum through and uh, keep it up. So there's maybe room for improvement for these guys who can watch the programme, maybe look at where the cooker guys are going, watch the uh, games of the super bike programmes in the front guys in the Superstock 600 category. Or they could always just come and ask you, you know, come and speak to you in the commentary box or after races, but uh, still Skinner leading the Formula 125 race from McGaw and uh, Robson in third position. I thought Ashley, I thought Ash was making a bit of an inroad, but it looks like the, the, the hall was kind of stopped. Yeah, you uh, know McCartney on that GP125 bike, he's absolutely away at the moment. He's pulled a massive gap on the rest of the guys. He's looked back towards you, Rory Skinner, heading in towards the top of seat curve. And he's just nice and smooth, you know, taking his time, learning the circuit pretty well. I was trying to say the charge is halted for Ashley Robson and it completely fell apart. And there's young Bethany Polanski now. We're talking about people improving. Come on, Bethany Polanski, this time last year, was getting black flagged after two laps, Dennis, purely because she wasn't quick enough in race pace. And now she's managing a whole race and she's in there battling as well. Yeah, a bit of competition with young Tommy Page, I think that was there. So good to see that happening for Bethany Polanski. Uh, up the back straight, though, is Rory Skinner leading the way. He's starting to stretch away from Jelly McGaw now on this little 80cc Formula 125. Round towards Hapen McGaw in second place and still Robson in third place. He's drifting back that little bit now is Jelly McGaw. Yeah, for sure. Julian just struggling to hold on to the wheel tracks of Roy Skinner. You know, Roy's lap times are consistent lap after lap after lap. You know, he's keeping a consistent pace where there seems to be a few mistakes happening from Julian McGaw. She's doing a, a nice, good, quick lap and a couple of seconds off. But these guys ultimately are still two to three seconds off the fastest lap time of the Formula 125 class. Another lap clicked off as we go over the crest of the hill here. And remember, Paul McCartney still leading the way on the RS125 and towards St. Curves comes. Young Rory Skinner, and he's followed by Jilly McGaw. And these guys remember very young, but further back down. Oh, very close. Polanski trying to go around the outside there. And that was Liam Shipperley. And that was getting rather close on the brakes here then. Yeah, for sure, but uh, Bethany Polanski looks like she's got a good exit up onto the start finish straight there, and she's in the wheel tracks. It's a shame that we haven't got to the likes of young Ma Max Alexander and Callum Green, and they threw up the road at the top of the seat curve there. And yeah. uh, it'll be great to see them out racing because these guys are really close together in terms of lap times, and they provide some fantastic close racing and let you swap in positions. Bit of, a, bit of a mistake from Rory Skinner there, but totally agree with that. Callum Green and Max Alexander separated by hundreds of a second in qualifying, absolutely glued together, and they would have been the class actor this 
this field, but unfortunately, coming in with tricky conditions, and both went down the road quite quickly, it seems, because if you're going to fall off, it's a fast place to go missing, but Paul McCartney takes the checkered flag, and he will be a happy man with that one. He'll be straight back in, and the first thing he'll be doing is looking for lap times to find out how he got on. Second place in the road, we're going to see Rory Skinner coming through, and he wins the Formula 125 class outright. Anyway, so taking home the John Young Signs Knockout Motorsports Club trophies is Paul McCartney with Rory Skinner and Gillian McGowan on the podium with Ash Robson, Lewis Patterson, son of Torco, Liam Shipperley and Betty Polanski in seventh place. Gillian, third place home but second place in class. A good result but uh, we Rory's going quite quickly isn't it? Yeah, he's got more straight line speed than I could catch him on the brakes but it was a really good race. What about the weather conditions? Roy was saying it's really windy, you can feel the bike being thrown around by the wind. Did it give you any problems? No, not really. Good stuff. There you go, so you'll be able to beat him in the next one. Yeah, hopefully we'll try. Well done. Thanks. And the winner, our second home on the road behind the GP125, but still the winner in class and uh, 11 years old, which has got to be some kind of record. Rory Skinner, well done. Thanks. Weather conditions, not the easiest. It wasn't really the wet that was the problem, it was more the wind, wasn't it? Yeah. Wet, it wasn't that wet on the track, but the wind just makes it really hard to stay in the bike. So you're constantly just trying to keep it upright? Yeah, it really has. And the winner, Paul, overall winner on the road, um, first in class as well. You've only got the Formula 125 to play with. How's the wind for you out there? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Uh, the track's dumps, dump patches everywhere, but it's starting to dry out. Hopefully by the second race we'll run slicks and it'll get a bit better. And hopefully the two boys in the Cowboys are all right. We've had a bad accident in the first corner, so... I'm sort of by myself, like, I like to have a bit more of a race, so, but I really enjoy it, yeah. Is this testing for you? Yeah, this is testing. This is a week more, uh, week more on Friday evening. We're out on Friday and out yet. We won two races yesterday and then this one today. We're just over here for a bit of track time, so are, and, like, the tracks over here are far better than the tracks at home. So on the podium we see Paul McCartney with young Rory Skinner and Gillian McGaw taking away their trophies. Join us after the break.